Hello, Ryder Hearts. I'm Ryder. And I'm Hearts. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. And a very happy Eid Mubarak to all of you. Uh, I hope you all are having a wonderful Eid. And wherever you people are, whether you're visiting your relatives or are at home alone, I hope this Eid is very special for you all. Thank you for tuning in. Welcome to the very first episode of the Rider Hearts Podcast. Before we start, we'd like to give a big thanks to you guys as supporters, as well as the donors who allow us to do what we do. Yes, without your support, we could not be starting out as wonderfully as we are, and we are continuing on new content and ideas as we learn and grow. As we have no sponsors to mention today, let's get into the podcast. As we had said before, our today's main focus is Sayonara Wild Hearts. As we mentioned in our intro, if you want to play the game, it's available on Steam, Apple Arcade, PS, Xbox, and Switch. We hope you enjoy our pilot episode. All right, so let's get started. Uh, how are you? I'm doing just fine. How about you, Ryder? Uh, I am okay, Heart. So our topic today was Sayonara Wild Hearts? Yes, today is that. That's the one. All right. What are we going to be talking about? To introduce this game, um, people will try to need a base for it. So we'll try to provide something for you guys. So you guys have an idea of what this game's like. But personally, I have played the game and so has Ryder. We are both major fans of this small, indie, underrated game that is absolutely amazing to play. Yeah, um, it was 2019. It was a four-year project. I think it came out in 2019. Yeah, yeah, it came out in 2019, but it was being worked on since 2015, which yeah, it was was awesome. And the creators of this project were actually Swedish creators from and Samogo one of them was the developer and the people who published this game was Annapurna Interactive and, and they, they made helped it. they made it well, yeah they they made it they published it and they were also like the publishers they make a lot of big games like you know that cat they game do. stray which one oh that stray oh yeah yeah Annapurna published that one that's actually quite cool. I didn't know that. I've yet to play that cat game. You should you should get it. It's like people don't realize it, but a lot of the big publisher the big games actually come mm-hmm. from the small indie companies. And they really don't get that much recognition. And I feel like Smogo should get a lot of recognition because they, they game... worked super hard. Even you know the game I was talking about, uh Thirsty Suitors or whatever, that newer one uh, I was playing. Yeah, you didn't mention you didn't mention that one. I never got published... around to playing it. Yeah. It was and made then, by Outer Loops, but it was published by Annapurna. Oh, so basically Annapurna just took like two small uh indie companies and gave them the push to have them be famous and because Annapurna yes. had interacted like interactive had published Sayonara Wild Hearts, the game became famous because of that in 2019 and it was a massive hit like s- magazines uh gaming websites and it got to, uh, the game of the year award by apple arcade in 2019 it did oh it did i didn't know it that did. i know it got it like uh it bafta did. awards and stuff i know it got it some it awards for like its music. it was nominated it was nominated That's, for BAFTA it's awards. pretty it's like, this is my favorite game ever like all the colors i use when mm-hmm. i'm working and stuff even mm-hmm. some of my ideas and the smoothness that is all mm-hmm. thanks to sign our wild hearts it's like one of the best games i've ever played it is the only mm-hmm. game i really care for it's like multiplayer games like t3 arena which is like a 3v3 shooter for mobile and flash party which is basically kind of kind of like smash brothers but not in the same style but it's also mobile and PC. It's like those multiplayer games where you pay to win or you can buy power-ups. It's just, it's no fun. It's not as good as a single-player game like Sayonara. That's fair. The game Sayonara is a lot different from the games I've played in life, and it was something new, something fresh on the take, because it's a relaxing game that, and I've never had that type of vibe with it, and I think it's actually pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I think, so they had what, 23 songs? They had, a, they, they had a few that you could clearly tell were supposed to be like, um, 
hit, you know, they had wording in it, it had it had an actual beat, and then they had more like background music-ish songs that were kind of like small parts that were supposed to connect the game together. That's well, okay, I lagged out there. Sorry. I'm so sorry. That's what okay. I was uh, what I was going to say about it is that the first time you mentioned it to me, I had never heard of this game. So when I did look at it and I had seen the trailer, like, oh my god, it's so it's so, it's so hip. poppy, it's so flashy, poppy, upbeat, and the if anyone like wants to know what this thing is about, in short, it's just a woman who's had her heart broken and she's suffering through heartbreak and she tra- is transported to a re to to an alternate place timeline dimension whatever you want to call it and she becomes this heroine who's fighting for her own heartbreak and her feelings and 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 i think this game really pushes you towards that feeling because when you do play it and understand and meet all of the characters that are in there and you know there may be not any voice lines but the fast-paced theme and uh, uh song the vibe and obviously the compositions they made are all original except for Claire de Lune, which was by Claire de Lune. It was still their own style, and it's with, it was like, their own style. And Simon I, had said, Yes, go ahead. Um, <laughs> I like the idea that it was like kind of feminine empowering, it, it's like mm-hmm. all women. I just love that idea. I feel like a lot yeah. of people would think, Oh, it's creepy, you're playing a, a game that's only about women and you're trying to sexualize it. No, that's t- honestly the opposite. It's like it's great to see women like games say sung by women. I mean, it was created by guys, but they were they showcased, you know, heartbreak from a woman's side. Queen Latifah was a narrator, which is pretty dang cool. I mean, a lot of games have big people, but Queen Latifah, that's a hard person to get in in voice lines and stuff. True. Dana Elaine Owens is known as Queen Latifah, and Simon in the dis- Simon in the discussion meeting had said that I want her to narrate the uh brief voice lines we have for the game and she well you know queen latifah is like so big and simon had just said it as a joke actually he didn't think actually they expect- would take it and from, serious from, and stuff okay from um, what i saw it was um yeah. it was it was a last minute decision to actually have queen latifah narrate the 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 mm-hmm. storyline mm-hmm. and I just think it's amazing. It's like, oh, all these big uh, publishers like Fortnite or whatever, or Roblox have big people, but it's like, okay, when you make a game that doesn't need lines or a plot or any of that, so to speak, it's like the game through its visuals and music kind of shows you what it's about. And that's exactly what Simon said about you want the project to tell you what it's about. You don't want to have to tell people what the project's about. True. So sorry about that. It's okay. <laughs> Siblings, I tell ya. The thing about this is that he made that joke and no one really took it seriously, but midway somewhere, one month into release of the game in September, like I think in October somewhere, Annapurna actually got Queen Latifah last minute and they got her to voice line all of those, you know, brief lines that they had set out for her and then they put it in the game. And, and I know think that's was- a really cool thing. What was perfect about it? That's that's cool. I'm glad they did it. I want to see a Sayonara Wild Hearts two come out. But what was re- what was really yeah. cool? It's like mm-hmm. adding those little woes or the you know the mm-hmm. awesome sounds at the end of the levels really added to the game. It it made things. It made you feel like so cool to be playing it. True, and the gameplay of the game like it's cool. it's very unique and it's it's its own style. And I've don't think there are a lot of them in its own unique style and it's like really rich and embracing and just everywhere and you feel really connected to it and it has emotion in it you don't need words you just need to see it and play it and then you feel so connected to it like you know like what is this and what am i feeling because i've been and it's a pretty short game like there were 23 levels and you play as the heroine and she goes through all these surrealistic landscapes and they're the and the landscapes are so fast paced and the music that goes along with it. And it's, it's like just 
makes it so better, honestly. It just makes it, it so better. It is not. Okay, this is why F- higher FPS is better. The more mm-hmm. FPS you have, the slower mm-hmm. the game. Obviously, it's like when you're taking, you know, captures on your Samsung Galaxy or whatever. What That's mm-hmm. why it's at 940 FPS for super slow-mo. Because the more at frames per second you have, the slower and smoother the animation is. That is why, like, playing in 165 hertz, like, the monitor I use for my gaming is 165 hertz. That's that's why that's nice because that game is so fast paced. It's a, you're you're going pretty dang fast, you know, in the mm-hmm. game, and mm-hmm. it does take some tries for you to get to get good at it. But that's why having that smooth animation and that slower, you know, the slower visuals that's really nice. And then, oh man, I can't tell you. You could go check out their uh, their whole playlist is on Spotify. Just type in Cyanar Wild Hearts. They made some good music in Linnea Olsen, Daniel Olsen, Jonathan Egg. Man, yeah, honestly, it was it was an amazing set of composition. And th- even as a person who had never heard the songs, I approved of all of them, even for the first time I had heard them, because it's it soaks you in so good that you just want to keep playing it. And, you know, there are ranks in the game. Bronze, silver, gold, and the highest is gold. You gotta collect all the hearts, as the game suggests. And the more hearts you collect, the more points you get, and you can always replay it without it having a timer and stuff. So I, I think mean, that's it's a it's a really yeah, cool. It's concept. nice that it's not like it doesn't feel rushed, and they will eventually yeah. if you wipe out enough times, they'll ask you if you want to skip certain parts of the game. Yeah, that's yeah. your choice, and you can either continue on until you're getting until you get through it, or you can just skip on. And the thing is, there's also wild rank. If you beat Yolo Arcade, which means you only get one life throughout all 23 levels, uh, yeah, you you unlock wild rank, and that means you can. If you get a higher score than gold, you will get wild. That's actually pretty cool. I have yet to try that, but I, I have only know. beaten in all the years I played the game. It came out in 2019. I have only beaten Yolo Arcade once, so it's it's pretty Still hard. A good achievement, get, achievement. Yeah, to get through every single level uh, uh, together with one life only. That's it's it's complicated. It's a good challenge. Yeah, it is. And to be honest, when you when you look at it and you think that, okay, this is just some maybe different platform game. But once you really get into it, it's it's just something more. And there is an entire story behind it, even if we can't tell properly. And... It's of course, just, it it puts me into an in a in a state of awe that they actually came up with all of this. Like, it's crazy. I just can't believe it's like the animation is so good. It's it's simple graphics. It's like not even a gigabyte big, and yet it's so modern and up to date. And they use like a lot of themes from Mario and other different games. It's like basically a collection in their own style of music and games. That it, like mm-hmm. even the mechanics. It's it's just crazy and. Um, God, it's like the and end like two. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah. What were you gonna say? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was ready for you. Oh, oh, I was done. I'm good, man. Oh, okay. Uh, my point on that was the creators of this game really chose a nice, of like a really nice name because. It- the name of the game Sayonara Wild Hearts is something you will have to remember because of how unique it is. And they wanted a unique name and they wanted an impact on the music and gaming community because they integrated both of them together. And I think that's a pretty good marketing strategy, but at the same time, it's a pretty good product of what they made. And the small indie company, uh, Simogo and Annapurna, like they collaborated, Annapurna actually helped them so much in releasing this because they had, you know, hired two more programmers for them and got the game out faster. And Annapurna had actually had a better schedule for them to work on. So it gave them better ideas and stuff. And 
they were, you know, really working around the works uh, in the beginning of the early stages of the game when they had a prototype and they were like, okay, you know, what's our first choice of music going to be? What what do we want it to be? Simon yeah, was asking. How do we want team, it like, to sound? So to how speak. do we want it to sound? What do we want it to be? And they first went for the option of surf music, and I believe surf music is like a little on the. I don't know surf music. I don't know how to know. I feel like it. It would be like wavy. I don't know. Like you have you've ever heard those surf riffs? Whenever somebody's surfing, mm-hmm. kind of like yeah, California oh. themed surf riffs. You know, yeah, kind of like, LA something. What what instrument is that? But yeah, you you if you if you hear you know whenever a surfer, you just hear that that certain style of music, and I'm glad they didn't go with that. I don't feel especially the visuals. Mm-hmm. It did not. It would not have gone with. I it. don't think that when you are going through the fast paced lane, you want to hear seagulls. Yeah, exactly, or coconuts. Coconuts or oh the God. Hawaiian music. Hawaii, that yeah, that Hawaiian music. That's like calm. Yeah, that's, that's not like major. surf calm music. Yeah, yeah. But um, no, thank you, thank you to everybody who made that game possible. Even like the Honestly, other people, yeah. like I am Eight mm-hmm. Bit. They helped sell merch for it and stuff. Um, even Unity, the publisher, the publishers who helped with publishing. Um, not even just that, but there was like you know for their fonts and stuff, and the people like Apple Arcade. This is on Apple Arcade. If you guys get Apple Arcade on your iPhones, you can play the game on mobile. I recommend it for like PC or Switch, but you can get it on your phone if you got an iPhone. True, uh, because they put it on platforms where it was really accessible for people to play, and I think that's a really nice and generous thing for them to do. Um, I think they should have put it on Android too. That's the issue: is a lot of companies advocate towards Apple and make stuff for Apple, and then you can't get it on Android. And that's the same with Android. There's a lot of apps I wish I could get on uh, my iPhone that I can't, but it's okay. I mean, we've played it anyways on other platforms, so it's all right. right. It goes for that. <clears throat> Sorry, but I mean, um, with Apple, mm-hmm. it's just easier because it's like it's like six bucks a month, and you get all these great games. You know, it's like they got PC games like Farming Simulator, Disney Dreamlight. Like Apple is kind of trying to. I'm not be sure that how mobile... many people would want to play Farming Simulator. Oh, there's some people who are into that. More country people, maybe, I and mean, not to be stereotypical, but. I know a lot of people who live out in the middle of nowhere or more country sort of people who play that game. And that's not really my style of game. I'm into, like, the music. Okay, farming, it's like, I get. But Goat Simulator, come on. Goat Simulator, kind of, to me, sounds like a ridiculous game. What are you it supposed does. to... What are you doing Make- that? It's like an idle tycoon game. You just sit and watch goats. Farm goats. Noise. Farm goats. Yeah. No. That's but like that. We're getting off topic, off the rails. That's we, that's fine. That's what we want to do here, a little bit. A little bit, yeah. The interview that they had with Simon, um, he had said something that really, really st- stuck with me. To be honest, he had said that this game we wanted to go more with feel rather than it being a logical complex puzzle type game and in the beginning of the stages you know they were working with okay what type of music do we want and then in the prototype they had a pop playlist a pop playlist running uh, with music from Sia, Churches or Carly Rae Jepsen and one they have you know those music they do, they do, but in the beginning yeah. stages I mean when they were prototyping the game they had well, a pop playlist running and they ran the game and they ran the music with it and they said that okay you know what Simon said to his team, like, oh, you know what? I think that this is it. This is done. And I think that we should work towards pop integrated with a fast-paced, uh, serialistic landscape type of game. But it's like, that's what I'm, that's what I was saying. They actually have the mm-hmm. playlists they were using with a lot of the music that yeah. inspired them to create. Yeah, and the fact and that all of the music is their own makes it so much that's better. That's so much. I mean, it was worth those four years. Usually games, yeah. even with like their own stuff like that, doesn't take that long. But it was worth, they made sure this game was perfect before it was released. And it never needed Literally updates. Perfect. And mm-hmm. that's, that's kind of what sucks. It's not a live game. At the same time, it's one of the greatest things they could have done. But at the same time mm-hmm. it sucks you know no new more lo- no no more new levels mm-hmm. no more new music mm-hmm. but yeah. hey you know they could 
end up coming out with the second game and the games they made in the past. What makes this game so different from all their other games is the games they made in the past were all sort of like puzzle games or interactive stories or stuff. They like Sign Our Wild, Wild Hearts is the first game of its kind that they made, and even it in general, yeah. like just the first game of its style. That's why so many people had liked that. It was named Game of the Year Awards. And even though it got so many awards, I'm surprised it's still underrated. It doesn't get mentioned that much, honestly. And what what upsets me the most is these big people like Jacksepticeye and Markiplier could be supporting these people and playing their games. Cause honestly, it's like, yeah. I played the game, and even though it's their music in it, they don't copyright that on YouTube. You could be making money off of somebody else's song just to play the game. And you know how many people would probably, like watch that sort of stuff even if it was a live stream it's just like it's so frustrating when big people only want to play what's popular or what's going on you know because they want to hop on the trends and stuff and simon just wanted a game where he said i want more relaxation and a vibe where you don't feel stressed playing this game you feel calm and nice and you feel fun you have you have fun playing this game and the mechanics of the game aren't even that difficult because they looked at the mechanics of the game and they were like we don't want anything it's a set game it's like it's not like an open world thing where you got to completely mm-hmm. figure out it out yourself it's like yeah, every yeah. time you play the level over and over it's going to be the same thing but it's same to thing. the point where the mechanics are so interesting it never gets old so to speak and the music makes it better like yeah sure maybe you'll get a little bit of an eye seizure because of the fast pace and your and oh, your it is such a friend it's one it of is. those flashy games if you have epilepsy i do not recommend this game unless you can I do it in like a gray Without color or something, because it is a it's flashy, really fast-paced, colorful game. It is, really. And as a person who doesn't even have epilepsy, I felt like I was having an eye seizure. But Yeah, as, no. Yeah. It's like, you, mm-hmm. you, oh my god, the first time Hart was playing this game that I got, I got mm-hmm. it for her. And it's like, the first time she was playing it, oh my lord, we had so many restarts. And I kept, like, yelling at her. It's like, go over this way, go over that way, don't do that. It's like it's. I it's, didn't know it was my first time it's not playing an easy the level. Game to learn. But it is really fun. But you don't have to worry about um, a time or anything or getting such big, big awards because Simon himself had said that we want a game where the levels can be played individually and without any restraint, so you can play them over and over again without any hassle. So it's like a single player game without it being so complicated and it's not open world where you have to figure out what to do and do your quests or anything like that because it's not Genshin or Honkai Star Rail. See, it's just a simple game. The thing about that simple is mechanics. yeah, it's like open world games there's so many, like Genshin can be so so Genshin annoying is already sometimes big. with all the quests Genshin and all the new stories big. and all that yeah. stuff. Mm-hmm. It's way too As big. A, I downloaded mm-hmm. it yesterday on my uh, Galaxy Flip 3 it was 32 gigabytes. That's insane. And what's that's, that's stupid? Literally one SD card on a phone. That what's stupid about that is none of the flagships have SD cards anymore, so it's not like I can just yeah. move my music over to its own card not the or new models, you know, at least. add add storage. Like once I use up that storage on that phone, that's that's it. Yeah, and well, that's pretty much it. And honestly, except it kind of sucks. Except, except except SanDisk makes these USB things that have like a USB C or iPhone end on one side and a PC USB end on the other side. So you can plug it into your phone. Oh, but so like a so like a wireless transport USB? No, it's device? like okay, so there's two sides to the card. One side has the port end for your phone the other side is the port side for your pc so you can plug Mm -hmm. it into your pc and then pull it out and use the other side to plug that into your phone so it's kind of like basically connecting your computer your phone to a computer a mini computer or a mini mini storage drive oh but then it can always be you know taken out pc and yes it can be removed it's less convenient than an sd card but it's still pretty cool especially for phones that don't have sd card storage anymore i mean it's up to the person if they want it and stuff to have well this sort of thing thing is like who who wants to pay 900 bucks just for 256 gigabytes in fact 
looking That's at a the little flip, too much. Looking at the flip five comparison from the flip four from the flip five with two hundred and fifty six gigabytes to the flip five with uh, five hundred and twelve gigabytes, it was like nine hundred ninety nine. The other one was at least one one thousand. It was like one thousand one hundred or something. And I'm like, why are you paying that much for storage? And I know Samsung does a lot of like, um, you'll get a free upgrade with storage if you purchase this which is nice mm-hmm. but apple they aren't going to do that and with their stupid uh apple vision pro like people are sending that back you know how bad that yeah. thing is they spent so much money on that and they're sending it back it's insane it's like at that point for that price it's only for like the tech people who want to uh look Just at it try or it test out. it and stuff and i mean i'm a tech person i'm a tech person but i'm not gonna spend the money to get one of those i'm not an apple tech person i mean i have like iphones and stuff but i wouldn't buy one of those just because i'm a light apple user because apple apple isn't you know obviously neither one's like definitely better i do prefer android mm-hmm. more but apple has that performance and those few apps and uh, optimization that android just doesn't have with their os that's fair i suppose and coming back to uh the game i wanted to mention something that uh in an interview someone had asked simon on how he completely feels about this project and what he needed on this and he had said that go with what your heart tells you and what your gut tells you because i think that's the only way that you will get something that feels like it has something to say or that it's an honest piece of work once you start thinking too much about what you're making and what you're You're trying to say with it then there's some kind of intangible magic magic lost because the project needs to tell you what it is instead of you telling the project what it is and I is, that, like, is that what oh, that line's from also you yeah, cut out a little is. bit earlier what were you saying yeah, before basically just the short line that i sent you it was just a full answer of his of how he feels about so he's basically he yeah when somebody came up and asked about it um he said to go with whatever you feel is right or however mm-hmm. you feel about it mm-hmm. and i love mm-hmm. that like i love that mm-hmm. not exactly being bossy or using only his vision see i cannot stand people like when ruby came out for rooster teeth i cannot stand monty on because he was like the one person and it feels like he was like the leader and everybody just worked for him to make his vision come true. Why should he get to have, you know, his vision come true as a, in a show? And even with Casey Lee Williams being like the only person who voiced, I mean, obviously there were other people, but it was 90% her for every single song in that show. I just feel like, you know, more inclusion with your members and people and collaborate. Like even us, we're both, you know, your co-owner of, uh, Techtopia Interactive. I'm the owner and founder of Techtopia mm-hmm. Interactive. It's not mm-hmm. like everybody below me would be, you know, only working to fit my vision. I would want them to have a say in the content and the stuff we do as well. That's how teamwork actually works. Uh, so, talking yeah. to coworkers and having ideas from it, but obviously people who are going to have their own take on what they want, I don't think uh, things will last very long. And since Rooster Teeth is shutting down Rooster Teeth, guys, Rooster Teeth is shutting down. Um, Apparently Warner Bros., who owns them, doesn't feel like the company's making enough money, so they decide to shut them down. And at the same time, while I, I'm sorry, I, I, I feel bad for it, it sucks, but at the same time, that kind of gives, you know, an open space for people like, you know, Smosh and hopefully us to slip into that space you know that little bit of open room for new content and media mm-hmm. so yeah. i Rooster mean they had, did well in its time but yeah, since they, had their, are they like, had their 21 years and it's like even the 21. issues with them i feel is there's a lot of subliminal like backlash going on between the people like one of the Two of the people on one of the shows were making fun of uh, the uh, another person who was trans. Really? Yeah, there was there were two members from what I heard that was making fun of a trans person, and I just you know it's like yeah, why why what is the reason why are you doing this? And Rooster Teeth, my issue was okay. Let's talk about Texas for a moment. It's like Texas. Yes, they never get storms. It's always hot and, you know, dry out there. But it's like, 
the minute I made a comment saying the people of uh, Texas should have been prepared, like rooster teeth and stuff, that one year they got a really bad snowstorm, and everybody came after me about it. It's like, okay, yes, the government was wrong for not informing the people to take precautions, but at the same time, the government probably knows no more than the citizens do. So it's not that hard to look up, you know, what the weather's going to be. And there should have been weather alerts or weather threats. I doubt they completely left the people of Texas in the dark. It's like, people could have prepared for that storm if they wanted to. I mean, that being said, they still might have been closed and stuff. But still, they could have prepared. Well, I'm not sure what their actual reason was for coming at you for a comment. I feel like people are too petty for that. But yeah, I mean, I, okay, them. I maybe should have, you know, said that they should, but at the same time, yes, the people of Texas, it's not only the government's tr- problem to, you know, uh, uh, look out for the people, like, you gotta, if you wanna know what the weather's gonna be like, especially during December, check the weather, I'm pretty sure people got alerts whether they checked it or not on their or phone. Or, if you want to be a caveman, just check the sky. That helps yeah, you. even that. But it's like I, I don't know what uh, people were saying in the comments. Oh, we, or Texas never gets this much snow, or Texas is never like that. Well, yeah, I'm pretty sure Just there's Texas never gets it. Doesn't mean it doesn't can't mean, ever can't check the weather and be prepared as a company. Like, like you imagine how much money Rooster Teeth could have been making if they had produced content. Not even just that, but. They took a year or two to release after Ruby Volume 8 came out or whatever. It was a good year or two before they actually released Ruby Volume 9, which wasn't even on their own app. It was on Crunchyroll. It's like, you could already tell they were starting to decline and go down. That's actually news for me. I didn't know that. But aside from Rooster Teeth having its downfall, uh, they're going to shut down soon anyways. They are. Guys, Guys, since they're shutting down, we are going to be the new Rooster Teeth here, so go follow (laughs) and like and subscribe and ring that bell for notifications and all that stuff big Rizzy YouTubers like to say. Yes, and we're just, and we like the today's topic, like Sayonara Wild Arts. We are also small and we would love all the support you guys can give us. It's appreciated. Yeah. Well, Thank guys. you for joining our episode officially about Sign Our Wild Hearts. I urge you people to play it quite. I would urge you all to play it if you people can. If not, it's okay. Please do try it though. It's really fun, and I hope you all have a amazing time playing it as much as I did. Yeah, well, guys, as for peers, that's all the time we actually have today. Thanks for joining us. We hope you enjoyed our pilot episode. And we have plans to release an episode every Thursday, so stay tuned for our second episode. And as always, you can scroll down to the bottom of our website and click on any social media icon to access our socials, such as YouTube, Spotify, and Instagram. And feel free to contact us on our contact page with your suggestions and ideas. We look forward to hearing your feedback. I'm also available to chat on Discord at Riderheart. That's all lowercase R-I-D-E-R-H-E-A-R-T. So feel free to scroll down and download that if you don't have it. Or, you know, reach out to me. Uh, It's open for everybody. Well, that's all. Plan to hear from us again next week with our next episode, as always. Sayonara, Sayonara, Riderheart.